So, another week, another Monday, another day in your life. As Trevor said, the first day of the rest of your life today. Uh, those of you who joined us on Friday, we had an absolute stunning day on the Wisdoms Global Summit. It was, uh, it was truly amazing and, and the contributions uh, from, from everybody were superb. So, if you missed that, I've put the YouTube uh, link up in the, in the chat box. You can go onto YouTube or you can go onto our uh, Facebook uh, page on, on Wisdoms. So all the videos are there as well as they, were, as they were recorded live. So I'd encourage you to go and, go and have a look at a few of them. And uh, if, you, if you can, if you haven't already, please uh, like and subscribe to our, our Facebook page and our uh, YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate that. Um, so Lee, this morning... Teams, I believe. Teams. Something about teams. That was a fantastic team on Friday. So, you know, that was a, that was a great way to, to segue into this morning. What a team effort that was and uh, really appreciative of, of everybody's uh, efforts and inputs into, into the day. It was truly amazing. So, Liam, on that note, I'm going to hand over to you. Yeah, thanks, Ivan. That's exactly it, is that. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that's what prompted this uh, topic today. Uh, it, you know, we just, it, for, for those of you who are new, we just flow from one conversation to the next. Uh, so we, we were talking about taking advantage of opportunities on Friday, uh, which of course was also stimulated by this, uh, we launching this global summit, uh, ready or not. And, 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 but what does it take to do that? Uh, it's not something you can do on your own, especially when opportunities are big, especially when they're unknown. Uh, and uh, so how do you, and, and, and it's also in recognition that we don't have all the skills, all the, the strengths that it takes, all the different uh, um, abilities to take to, to, to do these big things. And so it does take a team. Um, and so that's what it took on Friday is this incredible teamwork from everybody that uh, from Ivan hosting, Trevor putting the speakers together, uh, all three of us working together to, to, to build the conversation. Every single one of the speakers who put their hand up to say, yes, I'm going to be here. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put my, my thinking, my, expertise and the work that they put into these amazing presentations and and the courage many of them had to share deep and and very personal stories so that it was an incredible example of a team coming together and uh, as i was thinking this morning about how do what different teams types of teams have i worked with and what brought them together what is it that actually brings a, a group of people together, diverse people with a different thinking to work together to a common goal or a, a, a combined end in some kind of way. And I realize I've worked with different kinds of teams in different ways. Some of them have been pure business partnerships. There was a, an exchange where I brought a skill, the other person brought a, a business uh, opportunity or IP, and we were able to combine those two things and, and work together. I've worked with volunteer teams where you, you present a vision. You say, uh, so one of the things I did at one of the churches that I worked at was I helped to refurbish a, 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 a garage into a retreat center. And that was to, to be a place of quiet and, and, and stillness for people to come. And I just, I just presented the vision. I just said, this is what I think. This is going to be a place of prayer and healing for people who wants to join. And people volunteered themselves. And then you just get this eclectic mix of people that, you know, the personalities are going to clash but you work together because everybody is, desires to be there. Everybody wants to be there to contribute. Uh, I've worked with teams where uh, you, I've chosen the team, where I've thought of a particular object. So one of the purposes that I have is to 
uh, build small businesses in disadvantaged areas. So how do I put a team together that we could do something different and, and uh, be agile, but it, it's a business, not a, a nonprofit. So a, a for-profit organization that would ensure that there's enough education and enough stimulation in grassroots entrepreneurship. And there I, I, I thought, okay, this person's got the skill, this person's got the skill, this person's got this resource. And I brought this uh, team together. And, and then the, all you can do then as you bring that team together is to see what sparks, because you're not sure that it's actually going to work. They're, they're people who don't know each other. And, and then you have to find out what is it, what's in it for them. What, what are they going to get that's going to keep them gelled in this team? And it's been interesting. This is something that I've only started in the, since lockdown because that's where I actually met the, some of these incredible people. And since so we started with seven, we're down to five because this, the people start to exclude themselves naturally saying no uh, there's not enough in it for me or I don't like so and so and I'm not prepared to work with them uh, and so uh, that the team finds its own character as as you grow so those are my random thoughts around team that it feels to me like there's not a one size fits all. There's all different kinds of ways of bringing teams together. And it's your flexibility in being able to work in these different dynamics, but at the same time being true to yourself and what you can bring. Uh, so that's really what I'm uh, sharing by way of launching the subject. Uh, and I'd love to hear what's your experience of building a team or being part of a team uh, and what does it take great thanks lee for those randomly extremely well structured thoughts so it was <laughs> uh, i think it was a it was a, it was a great intro and, and lots lots of uh, lots of different elements there so let's get across to jasper first this morning seeing that uh, he's the man that i was now has built the biggest team um but uh, love to hear what your thoughts are on the subject jasper Thanks, Ivan. Uh, hi there, guys. Welcome to a chilly uh, Joburg morning here. But uh, yes, I think that was my probably my biggest business lesson in life is that uh, you can, there's that saying, if you want to tra tra travel fast, travel alone, but if you want to travel far, uh, travel with the team. Um, and uh, my biggest challenge was, was how to build a team. Um, but if I look at uh, the success I had in, in accomplishing some stuff was where I was part of a team and where the key was, um, uh, where the key was the cause and people rallied around the cause. Uh, and the cause wasn't always that clearly defined in the beginning. It was a, a bit of working it out. Um, but then some, something happened. There was a, a tipping point somewhere in the process. Uh, normally a couple of years into the process uh, where the right people started to talk to each other uh, and they each brought different skills to the table. If I think of my one success story that Ivan alludes to, uh, with New Life I built a team of about 20,000 people uh, in 12 countries and at its peak it had uh, 700,000 US dollar turnover a month. Uh, but th that team uh, and, and that was just my portion of the team was part of a bigger team that eventually became the leader in, in, in the world in that industry. Um, and that team, the bigger team that I was part of, uh, initially we, we didn't even all knew each other. Some, we knew of some of each other, but as the course became clearer and clearer that we could make a difference and we could, could lead people into a new mindset, uh, the team that was formed came from one being a doctor, another one being a farmer, a pastor, a nurse, an engineer, a teacher, um, and each brought different skills to the table, but we somehow found a way to, 
uh, appreciate and respect the input of each person. Uh, and it's the old story of synergy that one plus one is 10. Um, so, so that's the, the quality of the, th uh, or that's what one need to strive for. When I started GIG uh, in 2008, was also not very clearly defined, but like you guys had an amazing Friday, uh, we had an amazing Saturday uh, with our AGM. It was the 12th year of being uh, the GIG movement. Um, and uh, we had a, a feedback there and Ivan, Ivan was part of that. Now an AGM is normally, <coughs> a, 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 what do you call it? A, a, not a fun event, but I walked away from that event uh, feeling that it was the, the best that we've ever had. The feedback I got afterwards from people who attended that say amazing, the interaction, the engagement, but what impressed me personally was the, just the role that each of the team played on that day. And that team in GIG consisted of a banker, a pastor, an accountant, someone who has his cleaning business, someone from IT, different people, but uh, who, who bought in with the, uh, to a cause. And again, it's a volunteer organization. Nobody gets a cent for what they do. Uh, but what, what impressed me was two of the board members who stepped down who could be reelected and then they, they, they shared why they want to be reelected. And for them, it was a, a work has started that's not yet completed and we are making a difference in the lives of people. But then there's also what I believe teams, a, 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 a team of teams. And I believe uh, Triple C, what we're doing in, in uh, uh, Community Chamber of Commerce, is that coming together of teams of teams. Because Ivan and uh, Trevor represent, first of all, wisdoms and bring with them all their expertise and years and years of building networks and other b uh, business ideas. And myself and Gavin brings with us uh, the Gig Institute, the Gig CFI, um, and then also now the Gig Wealth, which is the insurance company, plus all our other networks. Um, and it took us probably three years to get to a point where we started to feel comfortable to where we could fit in with the thing. But again, I think it's, uh, it's probably not that clearly defined yet, but it's because we have a sense of a bigger cause. And I think teams can be built artificially from a corporate level, but then it's very difficult with all the artificial stuff that has to be done to keep people motivated around the so-called cause. But the success of volunteer organizations is that there's a real cause. And if, you, if that cause is not compelling enough, you don't attract the right quality people. So yeah, I'm a firm believer of building a team. And I think the con uh, kudos to Wisdoms. I, I can see you now on the verge of great breakthrough and you'll, you'll have a specific team around you of speakers and contributors and authors and uh, telling stories and stuff like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, people like Pulelo and Nozipo and, and Paul, uh, you know, there's stories to be told, but it's a, you'll be as strong as the team around you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jasper. All right. Let's, uh, let's get across to one of those names mentioned, Pulelo. Let's uh, hear your thoughts on the subject. Good morning again. Um, probably let me start by just thanking everyone uh, at at Wisdom's Friday was 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 just amazing. It was very interesting. I'm not sure how you. I, I sat on the chair throughout the whole thing. I don't know how you do it, Ivan. I yeah. At, at, at the end, I was like, I can't sit anymore. Um, so thank you again. From that was a great exposure. Was a great experience. I have to find. I have to say. I have to admit that um, I did find it difficult to present over Zoom. It was the first time ever. Because um, you know the greatest thing about presenting is that you feel the energy of the room, and you don't get that with Zoom. <laughs> so it was quite difficult. Uh, but it's lessons first time ever, first time to be exposed globally. So thank you again. I cannot thank you enough. Um, yeah, and talking about teams, uh, this for me is quite quite important because more the, the more I, I take introspection the more I understand exactly the person that I am. And I'm learning that I'm, I'm not an implementer. I, so that's why building teams is important. I need to find somebody who finds joy and happiness in implementing. I find joy in thinking, planning, building, and that's what I want to do. Um, in terms of experience, I, my, my biggest 
loss of money ever in business was in partnering with other people or in trying to build a team. I lost a lot of money. I think it took me about a year to recover. Um, what I learned though from that was that probably it helps in building a team to from the word go probably write down what type of people you need as a team, not just in terms of skills, but in terms of their values, because I, I had guys who were skillful, but their values were very different from mine and it became a problem. Um, one example, I had a belief that as we do well and making money, we must put it aside and build and build, whereas the others felt as soon as they make money, they want to use it for all kinds of things. And then, and then, and then also there was difference in how we manage conflict, uh, where others would become personal, others would say things that you're thinking, but you know, and so it said to me, personality, uh, values, um, and then skill, because it's, it's good and well to have somebody who has the skill, but if in their personality, they believe in destroying things before they build them and you are a peacemaker, it does become a bit difficult. So that was my lesson. But I, I am in a position where I really have to build teams. So it'd be interesting to hear from everyone else what your experiences have been and, and how do we build this thing. But Wisdoms, thank you again. Friday was, was, was amazing. I, I hope I came out right, but yeah, thank you again. Thanks, Simpulele. You absolutely came out right. Uh, it, it was, it was an, an excellent presentation and, and a lot of food for thought. Uh, and, and the research that you went into to present that was stunning. So if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to get onto YouTube and, and go and watch it. Uh, and then and with the theme of what we're chatting about this morning, go, go and watch Ben Drury's uh, uh, session as well, because uh, the culture guy uh, certainly had a lot of good things to say around, around exactly the elements that uh, Mpulela was, was talking about now. So I'd really encourage you to listen to that one as well. So Stella, you've worked in teams in corporate for many years. Uh, what are your thoughts on the subject? Thanks, Ivan. Morning, everyone. Yeah, so I was thinking um, over my, um, in my previous life in corporate world, um, I worked a lot with teams and um, I was thinking especially um, uh, the finance team is quite a big team. We were about 160 people. So we would go on um, team buildings every year. And then there, um, we would always, uh, there's, on some or other way, uh, they would put us in different small teams and we'll always have an activity, activities during the day. And then there's always a prize for the team that wins. So you always end up with people um, within the finance team that you don't really know or don't work with um, on a regular basis. So you get to learn more about the other people. And boy, if you put in a competition, you can see the personalities coming out. Um, you, you realize very quickly <laughs> um, uh, the leaders that take charge. Um, within that group, you see um, the people that um, rather wants to uh, uh, take a back seat um, and then you, you, you find the people that no matter what it takes, cheating, whatever, just to win. And then you have other people, no guys, we can't cheat, we must do it the right way. And somewhere along the line, um, there is that team dynamic which is superb in, in um, getting to know people um, without them knowing, you know, they, they're displaying their, their personalities. So, and then also on a corporate level, I've worked with um, a lot of committees and um, specifically um, the year just before I left, um, we had a new um, um, procurement system and I was chosen to, to be on the, uh, the committee that, that works with uh, development and the implementation of the system. And there again, you know, uh, you've got to, as Mpumalela was uh, talking about skills and values and that, um, where people 
some people just don't take it seriously and um to to be able to manage that um we uh, we the whole project is dependent on certain people giving information or input from the different divisions because we had a lot of businesses uh, separate businesses that was going to use the same procurement system so there's a lot of input from other people yeah so um and there i think within a team the dynamics come so out and the personalities of people and um and there you can also um see what skills they've got um not just technical skills uh but technical skills and and um experience but also um what uh, what type of personality they are yeah, so, and then in my second life now, after multi-choice, um, I've also, I'm involved with a lot of groups. So I've got one group with my uh, volunteer work with the babies, and then another group with the volunteer work with the shelter. And then I've got a cell group, and now I'm part of a group um, as being a trustee um, of my complex. So it, it, um, yeah, it becomes a challenge if you, because it's so many different um, different personalities that you need to work with. But I find it very exciting, and and I also learn from people. Then, in in a sense that um, how they interact in certain situations. Yeah, thanks. Great, thanks, Stella. I thought you were going to say you need so many different personalities, and I was wondering whether you were becoming schizophrenic, but uh, <laughs> you're working all these different different teams and things. So, uh, yeah. Right, uh, Herman, let's get across to you. Hi, everyone, and nice seeing you all again. Uh, but one of the reasons that I wasn't able to attend was I, because I was very deeply involved with building teams, teams across Africa, believe it or not. And, um, and the, the challenges to overcome the, the, the farming and storming stage are quite, um, quite big. And uh, I just referred to something which um, I think it's a chap by the name of Tuckman, who's got that curve, which he talks when he talks about building teams from forming, storming to norming and performing. And I think that's quite a, a, quite a good uh, guide for te building teams. Because um, you may have common interests, but I think very, what eventually comes out is uh, that the individual agendas within the team start competing. And that, of course, can lead to drama and a very early demise of teams. The, uh, the, the particular team I'm referring to, there were two Germans, they're serial entrepreneurs in the uh, high-tech field, and they thought that uh, we would, should be able, with, should I say, common sense and high-tech, high solve a lot of problems in, in, in the world, in general terms. They're very ambitious, very driven, um, and they choose the continent of Africa. And whilst they had conversations with um, people in Africa, they identified the agricultural sector as a major challenge and a possible change maker for this continent. And that's how I got involved because of my interest in actually somebody else connected me with those people. And yeah, that's what we have been focusing on. And what was quite interesting, the two Germans wanted to fairly quickly hand over the the whole situation to the people on the continent and they went on, on holiday for three weeks and somebody had to take the initiative to drive the process otherwise it was just stagnating and we and 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 the waiting period for the two initiators to come back and their idea is to initiate it but not to run it that should be uh, uh, left to people from from the african continent so there was a lot of challenges and and um, but we, we, we're still in kind of in, a, in, a, in the storming phase, but we are kind of rounding our collective edges, so to speak. And um, I'm convinced that something very good will come out of that. 
but as I said, uh, and I strongly believe that team building, considering the, the um, complex challenges we are facing, can only be done uh, through teams. I never forget when they smashed the, the collider with the, what's that, the, the, uh, the Hickens, uh, what's that, the, well, they wanted to create the smallest particle in, in, in Switzerland in that, in that um, collider. And when they were successful, he was the, the, the leader of the team was being con, uh, congratulated for his success. And he said, no, 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 that's not my success. That thing is so complex that without the other scientists, there would have been no success. And that, I think, is, is really what we need to look up at. Thank you. Thanks, I think it's the Bose Higgins particle, uh, the God particle, I think they called it, yeah, that you're looking for there. Uh, Correct. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, Master, I'm going to come across to you because I'm worried about your eyebrows. They were going up, up, up as, as, uh, <laughs> as Herman was talking there. So I want to give you an opportunity to bring them back down to where they belong again. So <laughs> let's get across to you. Thanks, Evan, and uh, thanks, Herman. Uh, at least I, today there's an addition of agriculture or farming into the topic. But uh, I just want to share, I mean, my team experience from a different uh, point of view. I, in my early days when I got into, into corporate, or I was a teacher. Uh, so when I left teaching, I got to work in the construction industry. And um, uh, I worked with a team of engineers. And one of the guys, Flip Jubert, who was actually my business mentor, uh, brought me into the team. I knew nothing about, I mean, about engineering. And uh, he, he was worried that uh, he could not get his message across uh, there were different stakeholders in, in the project your taxi people uh, people from the taxi industry the community where the project was it was they were building a uh, a transport facility around around social movement and uh, one of the things that he could not you know he, he had this eagerness of putting up across a message of the social impact and uh, and i was brought into that team and just to bring that particular element and from there i realized that uh, you know when you have a team of engineers accountants like stella you know at times they t tend to think uh, in a particular way in a particular structured way and the social aspects of uh, of a team life but you find that it is sort of like ignored or not taken care of. So yeah, I think uh, it is always good to bring different people in. I mean, in different settings, it, they do not have. They don't have to have, you know, the that knowledge of the industry. But there is an element, the social, like the social element that they bring into the whole team. So it is always good to look forward to teams. But of course, like uh, Bumelelo said earlier. Uh, yeah, we have bent our fingers, you know, several times. Uh, when you think people know things, but they they know them to your detriment. They know them so much that they can kill you. Thanks, thanks, Master. Uh, right, uh, let's get across to Caroline. I think first time on this uh, channel with us. You were with us on Friday, and uh, first time with us on Wisdom's chats Hello. this morning. So welcome. And uh, yeah, your thoughts on teams. Oh, I'm Marlon. Ah, ah. Marlon, you need to unmute yourself. I'm just going to mute Master there. Yeah, morning, everyone. Um, I do think that teams are a vital part of life. Um, in yeah, I've been part of various volunteer teams mostly. Um doing various things some church-based feeding schemes that kind of thing um in my business life i haven't been so very successful with teams i started out long ago in a team but uh the two other people in the team left to for other countries and um since then i haven't really found the right people i guess to team up with so i've been going alone which definitely does have its problems um 
I just, yeah, one amazing team that I've recently come into contact with is the one that's cleaning the Hennep's River. I don't know if any of you know about that, but I mean, this was started by a woman whose daughter said to her, I want to clean the river. And she has absolutely done, you know, built up this most amazing team of you know, this movement that now employs homeless people when they've got the funds. And I mean, on Mandela Day, there were 120 people cleaning a most disgusting river. So it is amazing what um, a team can do, it, especially when it's built around a cause, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Caroline. All right, uh, Mpo, let's get across to you. Uh, morning, everyone. It's good to be back. Um, such an insightful topic. Um, every time I'm, I'm back on this platform, I feel like uh, my mind opens up um, into new places. So thank you very much for that privilege. Um, yeah, so yeah, teams, I, you know, I've, I think even though I've been, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, I've always been with a team. Um, there's always been um, great people around me, um, you know, helping me get to where I need to go. But um, at this particular point in time, I've realized that um, scaling, impact, growth, um, all of that requires teams. And I think finding or, or identifying what people are great at and what people love um, and nourishing that um, and, and helping people discover their true potential. Um, amazing things happen um, from my experience when, when you allow uh, for, for teams to work in that kind of environment. Um, and I've also found that when, when teams take ownership of what they're building, so it all belongs to us, it's all for us. Um, I think also people give their best. Um, yeah, so uh, for me, teams are critical because we, we all bring something to the table. Um, and that very thing is unique and is special. So, uh, you know, that there's got to be uh, synergy amongst the team members um, and that fluidity uh, and the right kind of energy. So, for me, yes, um, to your point, things like personality and values are critical. Um, but, yeah, teams are everything. I am who I am because of teams. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks, Mpo. All right, Ed, let's get across to you. Yeah, well, I thought I'd be appropriately dressed for team, so I'm wearing my Sharps hat. And I think um, that shows that people like to be part of a team. So there's two sides of teams. They're sort of having people do stuff for you, but it's also what do people get out of a team? And, and I think rugby is a really good example of teamwork because you've got people of all different abilities doing the same thing you've got the really big guys in the pack and then you've got the little fast guys and then you've got the guys at the back that mop things up when things go wrong and if the big guys don't get the ball to the fast guys then nothing happens and if the fast guys sort of you know don't move with it then nothing happens so you know it shows that teams must be different and whenever I've worked in a team, I've always tried to select people, if it's a small team, that are totally different from me, because I know what I'm doing. I'm not very good at other stuff. Um, and I think the, the most recent team I worked on, we were thrown together because we'd all volunteered to help with a big race in, in Wales, a multi-day race in Wales through the mountains. Um, and we were a team of volunteers. We were all different. And the guy leading the event said, look, you know, you've all come together. You don't know each other. You've all got different skills, different abilities, different backgrounds. You're all going to do things differently. As long as it's 
working, don't moan because it's not your way. Yes, if it's if it's dangerous, step in and help it out. But if it's actually working and it's even though it's not your way of doing it, don't get upset about it. And I was actually appointed as a team leader. And I think my job was to stay out of the way because they knew what they were doing. The only thing that I, that I had to do was the guy wanted, the, the, the race director wanted the same performance on day seven as he got on day one. So my job was just to make sure that people took breaks, people took care of themselves. So really it was a kind of role of holding people back rather than pushing them forward. Whereas in some teams, you, know, you have to motivate them. I didn't need to motivate that team. I had to almost demotivate them so they were able to perform at top level in seven days time. And I suddenly realized we, at one point in time, we, we, we kind of had a bit of a break and we built this huge human pyramid. And I was on, on, on the bottom level and there's loads of people stacked up on top. And I suddenly realized that I really enjoyed being a part of that team. And sometimes I think of myself as a loner. So I think there's a whole lot going on in teams and, and it's worth looking at what people get out of being part of a team as well. So those are just a few of my thoughts. And um, Sharks, yep, yeah, great. <laughs> Okay, Ed, you can you can leave now. You know these shark supporters really are. You know, just uh, enough, enough of these guys. You know. Go so, Lions! <laughs> All right, let's get across to Cecil. Hi guys. Um, sure. When you guys are oops, sorry. Let me just get the way sun out of the way. And um, when you guys are talking about te um, teamwork, I don't think I've ever worked in a work environment with big teams. Um, all my, with the nature of uh, chit chat, I work with uh, one or two people. Um, and with my previous, my previous life in pharmaceutical um, industry, I was the leader of the team, but it was also always a small team, a, a team with three, four people in it. And then part of a big team, team where you've got to fit into the pharmaceutical being part of, the, of, of a division. But the, the, the thing that, I, and, and then um, Stella, we always used to have these competitions as well. And, and I mean, everyone knows that I'm a very competitive person and I will do everything to win and drag my team along to win. <laughs> but um, in the, the thing where I did a lot of teamwork was when, uh, when I was a national squash referee, when the three refereeing system came in, um, three people are watching the same um, squash match and all three of you are the referee and you all have the parameters to work within um, the rules and um, you've got to when a situation happens you've got to make your decision hold up your card or press your button on an electronic device and um, hopefully come to the similar conclusion um, be it everyone has seen the situation differently um, and then if you are one of the three that uh, are wrong, you're, you're sitting in a crowd and everyone can point out that you're the one that's different or wrong for that matter. <laughs> and it's pretty glaringly obvious that you didn't make the decision according to the, let's say the team, but you can't talk to the team. So that was tricky and you had to learn to work with the rest of the, of the people, sometimes people that you didn't know from Adam at all. Um, um, and they came from a different country and you just have to, have to make the decision that you think is best. So that was, that was tricky. It was, I love, I love it. I love doing that. Um, but yeah, so in the business sense, I don't recall that I've ever worked in bigger teams. Um, I would love to, but, um, I it just hasn't panned out in all my business life. Great. Thanks, Cecile. Yeah, well, I suppose some of us are meant to work in big teams and some of us aren't, you know, so uh, we just have, to, have to see where that takes us all. So, Samantha, uh, let's get across to you for your thoughts on Teams quickly. Hi, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you loud and clear. Oh, perfect. Yes, I'm listening to everybody and it's very, very insightful. So, thanks so much for, for having me. I think um, I'm kind of a combination of some of the things I've heard in the sense that the industry that I work in and the nature of my work can be quite insular 
um, but also quite uh, project driven. So you don't always have the luxury of having time to build um, the right team. You've got to kind of hit the ground running for a particular project and then um, kind of move on. So I think in one of those things it was, I can't remember, sorry, who said it earlier, but really focusing around the objective, the cause, driving that kind of space. So being very focused on what you need to achieve rather than, you know, trying to see who fits, you know, who has the skills and what are you trying to achieve? And that being the focus of how the team is put together. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Samantha. Uh, right, Kevin, let's get across to you. Hi, morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see behind Cecile that bright sunshine come in. You got a bit better than us today. It's pouring with rain over here. <laughs> Makes a change. Uh, anyway, team, um, just to give an example of a team that works so well together in my world, in our, in our running club. One of the things that we do amongst the races we organise, we organise a race called the Dartmoor Discovery. This is a 32-mile ultra run across Dartmoor. Uh, it's a massive undertaking to put it all together. Uh, the club members and people from outside the club all team up to build the, to become the team, so to be fair, for the two-day stretch because it's an event the night before the race as well. And everybody's got their own little job to do. And just any one person doesn't get... You know, doesn't achieve what they have to do with it, or the whole thing could fall down. It, 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 everybody has an important cog in the wheel. And, and as a result of what we do there, we've developed into the reputation of that race is so great that it sells out literally within days of opening up each year. Uh, and it's got a reputation nationwide. It is the biggest single lap ultra in the country. And you know, as a club, we're proud that our team has got that to such a high standard of high reputation. Uh, and as I've quoted in the in the chat team, we know it stands where together everyone achieves more. So uh, that's that's all for me. But you have it. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, Nazipa, let's get across to you. Thank you. Um, morning, everyone. I think in the interest of time, I just want to point out maybe just one thing. Um, I think for me, over and above everything else that has been explained which was very useful for me thank you is that you know i would want to add the importance of trust in building a team for me that 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 goes a long way like i have to whenever i'm in a team i need to know that you will deliver what you are supposed to deliver when you are supposed to deliver it for me that's the important part in in pulling together it's making sure that we've got that trust in each other and that as a team, we are then able to deliver. I think I'm, I'm more inclined towards Bumelelo of being a person with a whole lot of ideas. And then when it's time to implement, I need other people to be there to implement. And so that's the basis on which I feel the need to build teams. I, I do a lot of work with um, small business trainings. And in my trainings, I always emphasize the importance of collaborations and teams, because you know one of the things that, um, you will find, especially amongst black owned businesses, is there's not a lot of working together. Um, the collaborations are not there. And you know, one of the reasons is strictly because we don't trust each other. And so to me, that's always a big area I work with in facilitation is to say, you know, the successful business communities are those that work together, that are able to form teams and the teams are, where teams are able to work and collaborate efficiently. And that's how, you know, other communities are able to be successful, one of the reasons. And so my trainings are always emphasize, my trainings always emphasize the importance of collaboration and teamwork and, you know, learning to trust each other within a team. Thank you. Great, thanks, Nazipa. All right, uh, Trevor, let's get across to you for a, a final word before I hand back to Dee to wrap up. Yeah, I've got way too much to say about teams uh, and I differ with most people uh, already discussing on this forum as to what makes a great team and what doesn't make great teams, uh, just reading in between the lines. So I better leave that for another day. Great. Yeah, I think this is a conversation that can definitely go on. So Lee, over to you. Yeah, so that's exactly it. I mean, we've really just scratched the surface, haven't we, in terms of thinking about you know, how, how are we part of teams and what, have, what has been our experience of teams, but how do we actually work in teams? That's a whole different, uh, you know, topic. So 
let's carry on tomorrow. We'll continue talking about what teams, uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about the topic of, of building teams, working in teams, and, and what does it take? What does it actually uh, involve? And especially, I think, around the difficulties, some of the difficulties of working in teams. Uh, and then um, we'll pick up with Trevor first thing tomorrow. So, you know, he, if he's going to come in with something opposite and different from everybody else, well, then he's putting on the spot first. He can put the cat amongst the pigeons and uh, we can go from there. So this is teamwork at its best. Exactly. Yeah. Duck and dive, duck and dive. <laughs> so, yeah, I love, I love, I look forward to that, everybody. Uh, it's been a great, great conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, and we look forward to chatting again tomorrow. Great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Have a great day. We'll see you in the morning. Go well.